minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Trap Talk Reptile Network, the coolest reptile network in the world. What is up, everybody? It's your boy Joe from Meteoric Serpents, and I'm joined here again from Alvaro uh, from Clover's Reptiles. What's up, man? What's going on, bud? How things going, man? Um, you know, you guys, uh, I missed out last week, last Friday, because I was uh, in Dallas. Um, you know, thank you for holding down. Thank you for meeting with first stepping in, yeah. um, you know. It, I, I tried to make it, but good thing we didn't plan for it because dude, yeah. I, I told you I told you right away. I was like, dude, I like I would know myself and I wouldn't want that stress. So I was like, dude, just call it. It's all good. But uh yeah, we made it happen. So it's all good. And we'll talk about the show once we uh get through everything. But what's up, guys? We are back with uh thank god it's Colubrids, our Friday segment, episode number six. I know most of you are probably wondering where Junior is. Um, I know this was kind of switched last minute. I was told by MJ that his flight to Phoenix got like pushed back, so it didn't really work out with the time frame. So it's all good. We are going to cover this week, and Junior should hopefully be back next week. Um, Let's see what else. But, yeah, guys, let's get into the usual business. As always, make sure you're supporting US Arc guys, US Arc and US Arc Florida. These this these are the organizations that fight against um, any bills that are trying to go through in either the state or federal governments, uh, keeping us, you know, with our animals because that's super important. You know, these are people's businesses and hobbies at stake, and just their pets. It's really part of their family. So make sure you're supporting US Arc. I always say this: if you can afford to feed your animals, you can afford the lowest tier of US ARC membership. So make sure you're supporting that. I am a member of both, as is Alvaro. Tonight is also sponsored by The Chipper. Make sure you go check out CocoDoo.com and use code TRAPFAM24 to get 24% off of all of your orders all year this year of 2024. Uh, Coco Dude, the Chipper, Coco to Go. Uh, I personally use the Chipper. I really like it. Um, I don't really need that extra humidity. I actually put my blocks in dry and spray as needed. I think it's a great substrate. So that's my personal take on it. This episode is also brought to you by Blake's Exotic Feeders. Guys, you know, we're talking about colubrids here. If you're looking to diversify your diet and just make your snakes overall, a little bit more healthy, make sure you go checking out Blake's Exotic Feeders on Instagram. Make sure you send it, him a DM and let him know that the trap sent you. He'll hook you up on shipping if you're somewhere else in the country. Uh, I have the pleasure of being able to go straight to him because he lives right near me and can pick up some quail directly. So that is awesome. And last but not least, we are brought to you by Mark Bailey Reptiles. Guys, talk about it every time. Mark Bailey is an OG in the game. You know, he's been around in the Kluber game. Uh, I really want to talk to him about that and what it was like back in the early days of the reptile industry, you know. So go check out Mark Bailey Reptiles on Morph Market and see what he has available. All right. So um, how was Dallas, man? Um, it was good, man. Um, just the whole experience was great. Um, you know, I did, I went and last September just as a, you know, just to hang out, check it out and stuff for like that. Um, so this venue was bigger, yeah. um, you know, always good pros and cons to everything. Right. Um, bigger venue. There was more, uh, what's it called? More vendors, just bigger venue. And then, um, what else? I did good. 
I got some of my hognose in front of uh, in the hands of other reptile uh, hognose breeders and uh, people looking to get in uh, other, you know, other reptile breeders looking to get hognose. Um, nice. So mission was accomplished. That was where I really wanted to go. You know, it's a reptile breeder show. I wanted to get my my animals in the hands of other uh, reptile breeders because usually the other shows I've done here in Florida is a lot of been been pets. A few oh, people yeah. looking to breed, mostly pet right. stuff. All right, cool. Uh, that that's great to hear. Before we kind of get into the uh, nitty gritty of what we wanted to talk to talk about tonight. Just say what's up to the people in the chat. We got Wiz Constrictors, my dog. What is up, man? Thanks for being here. Villa Reno Reptiles, Big E. What is up? Thanks for coming out. Morph Valley. We got man Freddie in the house. What is up, dude? We got Cody from Morph Kings. What's up, man? Thanks for being here, Becky. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Appreciate it. Marcus, what's up, dude? Thanks for being here. We also have Ozark Mountain Morphs. Justin, what's up, man? Thanks for being here. Oh, one last person. Dwight, the pie man, what is up? Thanks for coming out tonight. Yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, special shout out to uh, Justin, Ozark Mountain Morphs. Um, you know, he pulled, uh, he took the other, because I had two tables for Dallas. Um, so he took the other table. So, uh, you know, shout out to him oh, and, nice you know, man. Trap Talk Network, right? Um, you know, just put it out in the chat and he was like, yo, I'm, I'm interested. So, you know, that's another plus cool. being part of the, you know, Trap Talk uh, Patreon and stuff like that. We all help each other out. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just uh, just letting you know, guys, before we get started, I'm in a temporary podcast studio. Uh, my garage floor got done, so it's a huge mess. It's getting rearranged tomorrow. It's all done and put in. I'm just in the guest room tonight. So don't mind my background. We'll be back to my typical all black background next week. Um, but yeah. Um, all right. And yeah, me and Alvaro are matching. I decided to rep the homie tonight. So oh, yeah. we're matching with the Clovers Reptile shirts. Hit them up if you want a t-shirt. Also hit me up if you want a Meteoric Serpents t-shirt. Because we got them. We got plenty. Yeah. All right, man. So tonight we kind of wanted to talk about what are some of the most popular colubrid species in the pet trade. Um, and that's kind of, you know, there's a lot of things there. I'm kind of putting it. I don't know where your headspace was at with it. Um, mine was kind of going off of popularity, what I see a lot, what's easy to keep like what makes a really good pet something that's like not a super struggle to get started um i don't think any of my answers are really going to like surprise anyone per se um yeah. maybe my number five i don't know but that's kind of an opinion then i have some honorable mentions here um but i don't know how you were kind of deciding in your little pre-planning so um you know we always talk about morph market and stuff like that and and it's a good metric morph market see what's how many uh animals are listed how many were sold and stuff like that um so i took a look at that just by sheer amount um which i think those numbers are going to be skewed this year because there is a slowdown on how many animals are moving on morph market i think in total um yeah. you know especially like over 2020 2022 time frame um so i looked at that i have a personal top five too you know yeah. just a preference what i like okay so um, we can talk a little bit about that. Um, you know what? You know, and I think and looking looking at my list, I think I messed up. Cause you did your personal? <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of did like, what do I think make the best pets in okay. the pet trade? Not yeah. uh, not necessarily like the most pop. Like, yeah. I think my list has some popular snakes, but I yeah. did a lot like what makes the best pets. What's like a great starter snake to put in someone's hands, you know? Mm -hmm. But but you so, know what? There's the beauty beauty about us two being here, right? Two two mindsets, right? Like yeah, I exactly. went straight numbers, and you went like more of ease of keeping and probably yeah. uh, starting and stuff like that. Um, you know, right. and they'll probably blend in somewhere too. Um, yeah. So you know, so, I wanted to 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 go because like, what is a colubrid snake? And you know, like let's talk about that first, right? Like for people that maybe aren't um, so familiar with colubrids 
what is a colubrid? You know, like there's what is it like 16 between like 16 to 2,000 different species of colubrids in the world. Yeah, you know, it's that, uh, there's a huge amount, and then when you lump in the colubrid and colubroid thing, because all the rear fang stuff is technically separate, um. Then you have some other stuff that like you commonly refer to as colubrids that are also kind of separate, like the uh, land prophets, all those like African species. So mm -hmm. it, it, you know, everyone colloquially says colubrids, even if they're not scientifically that um, I could say something that's not makes my list, but you know, that's fine. Yeah. Cause yeah. I have one on my list too. <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. Um, but like, you know, I was, I was, and I was, I was researching because I want to give, you know, I have an idea of what species are colubrids, but I wanted to give right. like a, a good, you know, breakdown of what considers a colubrid. And I was looking at right. the stuff and it's, um, you know, like the type of teeth they have, um, you know, they're, they basically don't have, don't inject venom, even though some are rear fanged, right. Um, head shape, body shape. A lot of them are long and slender. For yep. the most part, right? Um, have a smaller head than their body or equal. They don't have a big blocky heads. Yeah. Um, scale patterns. Habitat's a really weird one because colubrids from all over the world, right? Like, yeah, you have stuff from Asia. I think there's one on. I think there's one on every continent except, except Antarctica. Antarctica. Yeah, you know, yeah. Reptiles, yeah. Um, and then I think a uh, diet. A lot of them have very similar diets and, and stuff like that. Very yeah. diet. Yeah, no. for sure. So how do you want to do it? Do you want to go one through five or kind of five to one and build it up to like what we think the top is? Five to one. Um. Okay. Yeah, let's do five to one. Let's give a little okay. suspense. Yeah. You want to go like one each just back and forth? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. I'll let you go first. What What's Alvaro's number five on the Kaluber list? Okay, so my personal, I'll give you my personal, mangrove. So you have two lists? I have two lists. Okay. I have a personal uh, list, mangrove. You know, okay. Uh, they're cool, but just because of this, you know, we can't keep them here unless we got yeah. so many hours, right? Um, so that's number five for me. Okay. You know, nice. I, everybody probably is going to know what my number one is. So, you know, it's better to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Start at the yeah. bottom. Yeah. We know. Um, no, that's cool. Dude, I, I'll tell you what. If there was one, I, I'm going to call it a type. Well, I guess the mangroves are, are their own thing. But like just in general, the Boega, that entire um, genus, like if I had to choose a rear fang to keep, I mm -hmm. think it would be something from the Boega complex. Yeah. That's and just you know me because I just like how cool they are. You know what's very interesting? I have a handful of rear fang on my list. Too. You do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, again, I know what your number one is, yeah. but I don't know what the rest are, but that, that makes one of, um, one of your five, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. And then what about your, so that was on your personal. And then what about for so the list list? For the list list, I have, hold on, let me, let me, narrow it down right here um rat snakes just by sheer okay. number okay oh are we singling out a rat snake no i did i i lumped them i lumped all the, the species together um okay. hog nose rat snakes all that stuff uh um, gotcha. in numbers you know okay. i wasn't gonna go through there's so many i wasn't gonna go through each each yeah. you know, specific one okay so so my number five, and technically, again, this is one of the bends because I'm going with a land profit, uh, which is technically, they're technically closely co closer related to a lapids than to other colubrids. I'm going with the African house snake as number five. So, guys, if you can keep a ball python, you can keep an African house snake. Mm -hmm. Their care is pretty much identical. They like their warmer hot spots. They're from Africa. Um, there are multiple species within the African house there. Uh, oh, there's just a lot of really 
pretty animals. There's a lot of morphs. Um, and again, there's different species and different color phases. On my solo show, the Colubrid Corruption podcast, I had on April Linkfield of house snake morphs. If you guys are interested in house snake, so I'm a deep dive on that. Please check out that episode because she dropped some freaking knowledge. Um, great guest, and that's probably one of the most reputable people you can get an African house snake from. Also, besides that, they're super docile, like they're good eaters, and they stay small. Like they stay in like the three foot range, maybe maybe forty, um, maybe forty inches. I don't really know. I've definitely handled like an adult uh black african house snake and they're just great so yeah yeah and you know it's crazy because talking about sheer numbers right like i was looking on on and we're going to off morph market because i can't give people numbers off pet shops and right and, and expos because i just, you just don't have them right on hand um but there's only 35 currently listed on morph market which house that's next. yeah which that's yeah you know, I can't believe that that's that little bit. And then 567. Well, I think they, sold. they either all sold or like, I don't know. Yeah, but there's five, 567 sold ever. Interesting. Yeah. So that would have well, been I know on, someone on like list would have been really yeah. low, you know? Yeah. I know someone like April, like she has her own website and I mm. think she posts to Morph Market as well. So I think she sells a lot through like, facebook and our own site so mm -hmm. i don't know but yeah and then you know talking about that and then let's let's go a little deeper in, into your species like how many times do you see house snakes at a show um man i can not super often not drop, and yeah. a lot of times they're mislabeled in talking to april a lot of times they're mislabeled they could be imports um so yeah, but I think they're a very low key, like colubrid, uh, not really a colubrid, but like low key species that definitely should have some more love in the hobby just because they're cool. And again, they're as easy as keeping a ball python. So if you are good at keeping ball pythons, you can be good at keeping a house snake. I hear that. Yeah. So what are we? We're, we're number what? You, that, we're still on five, right? Yeah, that was my number five. Okay. Yeah. That's not a bad one, man. Like on, on care and ease of keeping. I agree on that, yep. one, man. They just yeah. need to be raised more in popularity, right? Like a lot of yeah, other colubrids. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. And I, I think with colubrids, why we haven't seen such a boom in um in popularity because we have there's not morphs. You know, there's a lot of yeah. colubrids that there isn't morphs yet right locality there's some morphs. there's some with those guys but mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of line breeding involved mm -hmm. um a lot of the morphs are like albinos like forms of albinism mm -hmm. um there's some other ones like i i know there's some pattern ones but in general no it's not super morph heavy so you are correct but yeah so all right so number four for me is a rat snake i i just okay. lumped them you know rat snakes um the bamboo uh one the bamboo rat snake it's you know one of my favorites to look yeah. at um that and then the rhinos and you have both okay. right so yeah. um they're pretty cool right on my personal top five um now number wise number four was um milk snakes at okay 311 currently listed on morph market stuff like that well that works quite well because my number four is specifically the honduran milk snake okay so hondurans are by far my favorite and i think other people will might have different opinions and that's fine uh hondurans are probably the most common especially because there's multiple morphs within that species um when i worked my pet store job i got to deal with a bunch of Hondurans, a bunch of adults. We bred them. Um, then I I played a big part in rearing those babies and and getting them established and stuff. So I have a big affinity for Honduran milk snakes. Um, I think the Annery ones are fantastic. The uh, the the ghost was it ghost? 
or it was like anery hypo so they were like yeah so it was ghost um so yeah just a super super cool animals uh i will say as babies they're very squirmy um but once they get to adult size and plus they get like five six feet and kind of thick um i would say thicker than a rat snake perhaps depending but they're they turn into impressive animals i would say the hondurans get the largest out of uh the milk snake species yeah many of them yeah. many of them stay a lot smaller but those guys get to a uh, fun impressive size and, and you know what man just a standard milk snake is such an impressive you know the honduran milk snake is such an impressive looking snake yeah um, with, with the colors and stuff um and like you said great great uh morse in them and stuff um is you know me being a newer really deep into the reptile world um have they lost popularity or was it was there never like a, a large group um i wouldn't say i i don't think they've lost popularity at mm. all um in general i think the colubrid market is starting to boom a bit more over time over these last few years especially um so no i don't think they've lost popularity i just think we I, I think me and you especially like we just see so much of the industry on like the ball python side of things that we kind of get lost in other stuff like yeah. you know i i look at it now and like even when i'm looking for guests for my personal podcast i'm just like i don't follow enough people like i need I need more guests and I yeah. need to find people. And I'm like, I know they're out there. It's just a matter of me finding them. So yeah, I don't know. And you know what's another thing too? I noticed um, you know, even when you go to shows, right? When you're looking for something or you have something, you know, you notice that, right? And you overlook yeah. a lot of things. Um, and I was recapping earlier today, like Dallas. Like I'm not like, all right, what colubers did I see in Dallas? And Unfortunately, I didn't take enough time to walk around okay. booth by booth um, and really take a look at other people's stuff um, other than like the other hognose breeders that I knew and I stopped by and said hi and stuff like that. Um, you know, I just wish I had more time. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I, I know it's hard at big shows like that, dude. Even when I'm vending the small shows, I'm like, I want to go look around, but like, you don't have a lot of time to mm -hmm. kind of like actually take it all in and, and look around. You're kind of just like, all right, how fast can I walk and like, 100%. what, what table, what table, yeah. yeah, what <laughs> table can I pass by that's like, oh, okay, there's something I actually want to look at. Yeah, for sure. But yeah. All right, so that was number four. Okay. What are your number threes? Number three, um, for my personal king snakes. Um, I think they're all they're all really cool. Um, you know, Mexican black kings are some of the just most stunning snakes to look at. You know, see and the size. Yep. I think they're really cool. Um, what what are your thoughts on on keeping king snakes? You know, like as a are they well, I'll just list? get right into it. The California king snake was my number three. Okay. <laughs> so we're super lined up here. This is this yeah. is dope. The yeah. California king snake is my number three. Um, it was my second or third. It was my second snake ever. Um, cow kings are just one. They're cool. They are super common. They have a lot of morphs. Keeping is really cool. They're just amazing animals. Their uh, appetite is second to none. I mean, that, that like you feed that thing, it'll freaking eat. They're garbage disposals. Mm -hmm. um, they can be bitey as babies. Like they're kind of, they could be little assholes, but like they're just scared of you. They hatch small. Um, they also have like, in comparison to rat snakes, especially, and there's the case with a lot of, I won't say a lot of colubrids, but like they have a smaller jaw. So you'll notice that you can't exactly give them like the biggest of meals. I'd say their jaws go more vertically. Mm -hmm. They expand more vertically, whereas a rat snake is able to go like wide mm -hmm. um, in comparison. So yeah, 
I don't think they could take like super gigantic meals. Um, but again, I, I just think they're one of the easiest snakes to keep yeah. and just voracious and, appetite. So, yeah. and on the numbers, you know, actual ads, it's number three, two with 895 listed. Okay. So, um, nice. just in general King snakes. Um, so falls pretty in line, you know? Um, yeah. And it's funny because like, right. Like we, we talked about the most popular in the pet trade and we said the pet trade because that's what drives the hobby. You know, like, um, yeah, we have, you know, some, you know, there's probably specific, just, just reptiles in general that we're very, that we like that aren't common and the most common person won't ever see one or ever, won't ever be interested in one. Um, so I think, you know, the pet keepers are the majority currently. Yeah. Um, and that's what keeps, keeps it going. The community going, right. A hundred percent. So that, I think that's why, like. I wanted to get into the pet trade and stuff because with 1600 different, let's say minimum 1600 different colubrid species, we can be here today, tomorrow, and yeah. the next day, just name them. Right. Of um, course. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so, I mean, so we all had King snakes as number three on all the list. So that's yep. really cool. Um, so my, my number two is Barron's um okay. specifically you know the blue barons so that was one snake that if i saw in in dallas then airbc dallas um i probably was gonna go pick up and my wife's gonna kill me okay um but i didn't see any you know they're okay. the, the elusive uh you know the blues are the elusive barons that um i've seen once or twice on morph market i've never seen at yeah. the show um you know and um number two on the numbers is corn snakes with 1300 ads listed on, on morph market. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's corn snakes are pretty hard to dethrone. You know, they're just in sheer yeah. numbers and morphs and combos, all that stuff. Yep. They are, I mean, and we're going to talk about them anyway, but like them and hogs, just like the amount of morphs I, I could be wrong, but I still think I think the amount of corn snake morphs surpasses the amount of hognose morphs. Oh, for sure. I I could. Yeah, for you think sure. so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. I just think there's this huge boom of hognoses right now, and that's why we're seeing, uh, one the numbers so high, and I also think a lot of corn snake breeders are just like OGs that stay off of social media and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think they're just breeding, putting them on Facebook, putting them on their websites and stuff. Like, I, I just think that's why I think the numbers are skewed. I think there's way more corn snakes out there that just aren't out on morph market circulating right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that goes for any species literally, but mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a huge skew when it comes to mm -hmm. corn snakes. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, Corn snakes didn't make my list. Um, they're cool, but I yeah. think when they're they're bigger, they're just so wiggly, so squirmy all the time. Um, where I'm not a fan of them, right? Like, um, okay, I, I used to think they on the the body size width, they stay too small, you know. Um, and it's crazy because hognose are smaller in length, but they're girthier bodies and stuff. Um, what about yeah. what was your number two? So my number two is the obsolete group and i'm gonna piss off anyone who cares about current taxonomy so i'm lumping all of the north american rat snakes that basically span from texas rats that's basically texas rats black rats gray rats yellows everglades deckards and like everything that encompasses what used to be uh the within the species obsoletus or obsoleta. Um, yeah, all those snakes are one fantastic, super easy to keep. Um, I, I just think they're not as popular because some of their base colors can be a little bit dirtier. They can be a little brown, brown, especially brains, as, yeah. especially as hatchlings. Mm -hmm. However, what people don't realize is that colubrids just age like fine wine. Uh, a lot of species do, okay. and these being, you know, nothing different. Um, 
you know, yellow rat snakes. I've seen some beautiful, beautiful yellow rat snakes, and they're going to start off looking like, you know, the same as hatchling Texas black and, and gray rats. They're going to start off looking gray with the, you know, the, the splotches on the back. And then they just age and turn into this beautiful yellow color with the two racing stripes going down the back. And same goes for Everglades. Um, cause the Everglades just turn into this bright orange animal and it's just mm. like, whoa. And they start off the same as the others as well. Um, and you know, I've talked about it. Like I have Texas rats. I have some adults that have aged fantastically. Now they are triple hats. Uh, so that's probably affecting it a little bit, but the colors on some of these things are just crazy. And as everyone knows, I am very partial to my Texas rats, so they had to be high on my list, even if it's lumped in with that group. But yeah. Uh, also, besides that, like they're super easy to care for. You can keep them like basically room temperature, like mid to high seventies all the time. Um, they eat super well. They have fantastic appetite. Um, they'll grow to a, a nice size. Like, you know, it depends what we're talking about in like localities sometimes, but like most of those animals get anywhere between four and six feet on the grand scheme of things. And even like, you know, those six foot animals are super impressive animals, super pretty animals. So, uh, yeah, again, just super easy, super cool. I don't think people give them enough love, but that's my number two. Yeah. Cool. You know, um, I just thought about something and um, that I was going to mention when we were talking about Kings is when I was in Texas, I got a, a quick uh, time to yeah. go out and um, check out some property, whatever. And um, there was a, a piece of plywood out there. So I was like, I got to pick it up, you know? Um, you checked I, one piece and you one piece and, you, and went, damn. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> and it, what was it that was a that was a, a speckled, speckled king? king yeah nice yeah, man yeah it was a fresh it had to be a fresh hatchling um oh was it that small yeah you know what? the small. pictures you sent i couldn't i think couldn't you tell. left it on the ground so i couldn't tell yeah, how big yeah. it was I, left it, I have a video of me picking it up um but it was small it was probably like maybe six six eight inches long and stuff of that okay so it was a nice. hatchling i couldn't find the mom around you know okay um, but it, it's cool, you know, like I'm, I'm really looking forward. I'm going back in, in summer, so hopefully I can find some more stuff and, and check that nice. out. Um, so that was the first time I found King out in the, you know, just herping and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, man. Talk your shit. Talk your number one. Let's go. <laughs> we all, we all know what it is. We're here for it. Yeah, man. Go. Uh, number one, hognose, right? Um, and, and. I loved hognose together uh, because I like different species of hognose. I think they're all yeah. pretty cool. Um, but, you know, Western hognose will be the number one in my book right now. Um, and currently on Morph Market, they're number one as well. You know, 1,800 uh, listings yep. currently. And um, and I think sold over the time frame was, I forget how much. Um, it was pretty high up there um yeah what's it called you know i also had looked on on morph market the total amount of colubrid ads on currently all colubrids under morph market but it doesn't yeah. add up so i had put you know the colubrids uh but it only gave me five thousand. and look at the you know 1800 for hog nose 13 for uh corn snake it's close um but it was five thousand current ads okay um, in 2023, there was about 1,900 sold um, on Morph Market, you know. And Morph Market, I think, you know, what, back to what we we're talking about, it's a very small metric because, um, you know, we're not counting how many animals get sold at all the multiple shows that there's year round, right. um, and, you know. And then this is only U.S. the United U.S. based numbers too. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if we're going to worldwide and all that stuff, things might change, right? Yep. Um, and then yeah, so Western Hog knows is my number one, number one on, on ads, number amount of ads on Morph Market. Uh, you know, I'm partially like Western Hog knows, and then uh, the giant uh, Madagascar Hog knows are are really okay. cool. Nice. 
So what's your number one? Let's hear it. My number one are corn snakes. Mm. Um, honestly, like you can't beat a corn snake. I, I I find it hard to be a corn snake in terms of care and stuff. I I've cared for again. I always go back to that pet shop. Like I've cared for so many baby corn snakes. I've grown up so many corn snakes. Uh, they're just simple. You know, they're basically it. It's pretty much the same care as the obsolete group I was just talking about. Though I think corns in general, for the most part, are a little more docile, a little more calm. Um, so that's what I just think puts them over the top. Plus, obviously, the morph diversity. Uh, I just think it's fantastic. I mean, there's so many cool corn snakes. I've honestly been eyeing them up recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't mind having like a nice like trio even of a little little corn snake project just to have something produce a couple clutches a year of some cool stuff. You know, um. They, yeah, and they come from like the southeastern U.S. You could keep them really like cares not hard. They're good eaters, so yeah, they're pretty solid. Yeah, I think as a first time snake, corn snakes are pretty uh, dead on. Um, yeah, especially for the Kluber species. What do you think about how you know if you hold that five foot long corn snake and it's wiggling around and stuff like that? Do you think, what do you think about like, you know, because we have younger kids, you know, smaller kids and stuff of like that in the hobby and, you know, Honestly, that drives a lot of. Yeah. I think it depends on the animal. I definitely don't mm-hmm. think all of them are like that because I've held corn mm-hmm. snakes that literally just like sit in your hand and chill. Mm-hmm. Um, I've definitely seen some wriggly ones and some of them have attitudes and yeah. that's just, you know, that that's with any species you're, you're going to get that with anything. So, um, I definitely don't think that kind of speaks for the majority of corns. Mm-hmm. I get what you're saying. And, and that could go for a lot of these colubrids, honestly, because all of these animals can get to a, a fairly decent size and be wrinkly and, and be bitey sometimes. So, um, yeah, I think it goes for, for anything, but in general, I still think, corns are have my one spot yeah yeah and you know what one thing we didn't cover man price points and stuff like that oh right? yeah like, like corns on the price point is is dead on for the pet market for the pet yeah. you know trade and stuff like that in general mm-hmm. all the animals i picked are priced pretty fair like like a pet keeper can easily pick up a normal of all those to something with two to three genes even for you know a couple hundred to a few hundred mm-hmm. bucks like just not expensive um mm-hmm. again i chose a lot i i went kind of basic i chose pretty much all north american and then hondurans i guess south america so i went all new world minus the house snakes mm-hmm. um but yeah, it just in general, a lot of these species that are over here on our our side of the world are just very simple to keep. And that's probably because we live in the same environments as they do. Yeah. So, yeah, easier to transition into, into captivity and all that stuff. Um, what does it say? Um, now, Hognos wasn't on your list, man. They that's are an honorable mention. Honorable mention. So so let, let's hear why why not on your top five with so like, yeah yeah so there there's a couple th- things now I I'm not denying their popularity yeah. whatsoever yeah um wh- when they're hatchlings they they're very small mm-hmm. um I think they're a pet that a parent could pick up for a young child and the young child can mishandle and lose it I think it would be an easy snake to lose yeah. um and that goes for a lot of these species too mm-hmm. but like they're just super small and and delicate so there's that uh there's also you know you would hope breeders have the integrity to make sure their animals are well started on on r- rodents unscented yeah. rodents uh but there's that factor as well um yeah. that you could have a picky hog nose 
So that, and then my, my last thing, uh, I always go back to it. It's just the rear fang thing. Um, you know, I think you've done a good job at like saying like, Hey, like this is what it is. Like you've made your YouTube video about mm -hmm. it and you know, which is good. Um, I just don't think it gets, and I don't know if it would be bad for sales and maybe I'm overstepping, but like, I, I just don't think there's enough emphasis on that piece on uh, the rear fang piece. Yeah, and just the fact that it could, you know, it could be harmful. Like, you never yeah. know. The wrong person could get bit by that snake. Yeah, yeah. And you know and, what? And that, they that's would very, never know yeah. until they do. Yeah, and that's very interesting because, like, um, it, it's so, like, it's hard to go back and forth on that because it's so in medically insignificant to us. So, at I least know. that we know of, that, like, no, there's no medical... Um, what's it called entity or whatever putting enough information research i mean in general yeah. right reptiles nobody the the medical world the general like scientific world doesn't really put much yeah. um work into it stuff like that um i've read a couple of of uh hospital reports and some studies and stuff like that and you know like you said i did the, my youtube video to first of thing is learning how to remove the hog nose off of you because i think yeah. all the all the <clears throat> excuse me the reactions that i've seen or you know uh from the bites and stuff like that um have been a long long uh you know i mean five minutes i would say is a long time to keep any animal biting on you right yeah um and stuff like that but i get that man yeah we're, we're fanged like right the mangroves are, are really cool and stuff like that but yeah. they're they're still higher on that you know tier right right of course effect and stuff like that uh same thing like i said I have Barons racers. On yeah, my the Barons too. Another another rear fang too. You know, um, yeah. You know, if I didn't have kids, I probably would do venomous. <laughs> seems seems I'm going that way, yeah. right? Um, but no, no, man. I, I don't know if I want that adrenaline rush. You know, no. Uh, yeah. So it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. You you know what? I think they're great animals. I I like them. Um. I don't think I like them enough to keep them for me, but yeah, mm. it just like I in no way am I not denying their popularity because they are number one. So can't yeah. can't say anything against that. Um, just I I think there's other species. Again, I probably went wrong with my list, and I just picked which ones do I think are like the the best pets, the easiest yeah. pets. Like what's good for as a starter colubrid. No, no, I think you, um, I think you you did a good job on that, man. Yeah. Um, you know, different points of views, right? Um, what, what it's really between them and that African house snake. That was like a tough number five choice. Okay. Like that, they're, yeah. they're kind of interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I was gonna say, would you keep any rear fanged? If I if I could, it would probably be a boega. Okay, so, like something in that mangrove in the boega yeah. complex. Yeah, yeah. You're like, if I'm yeah. doing, I'm gonna go all the way, all the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. think not a barons. I don't know. I I think they're cool. Yeah, but. No, nah, it's just not for me. I'll admire them from afar, though. I got yeah. to hold a few. That was that was good enough. Yeah, bro. What did it for me was the that powder baby blue color, man. Yeah, yeah, um, it's great. It, it, it's so cool to see, right? Um, but they're you know maybe by the end of the year I will get one. In my, in my hands on one and stuff. Yeah. Um, but hog nose, right? Like we'll go back to hog nose. Like, I think they're so popular because on the morphs that they really have uh, yeah you know like 100 that's i think that's what makes them so popular just the uh, uh that's one one of the main things i was talking to some people at the show was you know you see a lavender hog nose you know it, it's lavender if you see a uh you know a xantic it's a really nice xantic um you know the the morphs are really different yep. um yeah there's some like the the different types of uh, albino you know t positive t negative stuff Sometimes right. they're closed, um, but most of them are, are really different. Um, wh what do you think would happen if, uh, I mean, that's a pretty easy answer. If we saw like rat snakes are, are really cool, you know, like they're on my list, my personal list. And if there was more morphs in rat snakes, you know, in general, 
Um, I don't know. It's still tough to say because there are quite a few morphs uh, with the black rat snakes. There is morphs within the Texas. Um, and with that, uh, these animals are just often extremely variable. So uh, there's that with it too. Like no two are going to look exactly the same, especially with the Texas. Like mm -hmm. you're not getting two of the same animals by the time they're adults. Like you can tell the difference between them a hundred percent. You know, there's some, there's morphs within the, the gray rats and the, oh man, the Everglades. Um, so there are some morphs there. I, I don't quite know what it is. Maybe it's just like not hitting. I don't know. Then I think people see them as babies too much. I think that's the main problem is mm. people see them as babies when they're just not as colored up. So they don't get the chance to see them as adults. Mm -hmm. um and see them with their true colors because if people saw an adult everglades next to a baby everglades they might say oh okay yeah. that's what the snake's gonna do, be do you have a picture you could pull up of an adult everglades or you know someone that has one yeah let me to, to, uh you know. yeah give me one second so let's see there's some chatter on the chats while you're looking that up. Um, ugly, the ugly farm. Um, yeah, man. Uh, reactions is the reaction I've seen almost exclusively from letting the snake chew to see what would happen. Um, yeah, you know, that's one of those rules you play stupid games, win stupid prizes, right? Um, but I think that's in general, like I, I tell people with reactions to bites and stuff. Um, I mean, you let a cat, a dog bite on you, you're going to you're going to get a reaction because they have bacteria on. You know, I mean, you let a human bite on you, you're going to get a reaction. Um, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, it took a while. He posts a lot of a lot of babies because they're cool and they're morphs. Also, this mm -hmm. is. This is the homie Chris Montross from Dark Horse Herpetoculture. Um, yeah, I mean that that's an adult Everglades standard Everglades, yeah. um, and that's a that's a locality animal as well, an F one locality. So, uh, one generation captive bred came from wild caught parents. So, that's a pretty stellar animal. Uh, when they hatch, they don't look as good. Now he has some morphs with these as well. I mean, these are just fantastic. I mean, that's an A Mel, uh, and they just age super, super well. Um, have to show off Chris's page when you're talking locality North American rat snakes. I mean, just look at the stuff. And also, by the way, when you produce quality, it shows. You get yeah. beautiful babies. I mean, you just look at these pictures. Like this is uh the white oaks the white oak gray rat snake i mean come on you can't you can't beat yeah. some of this stuff he just has great animals so i give him props whenever i can uh what is this this is a yellow i mean that's that's a yellow rat snake and that's a really pretty one but thing is like i said yellow rat snakes they hatch out just gray and with splotches so they look like you know, they look like yeah. any old gray or black or Texas rat snake as a baby. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, how, how much, how much line breeding is done in the rat, in the like Texas rat snakes and like Asian rat snakes world? I would, I would say a bit. Cause, yeah. um, again, someone like him is, is breeding like locality stuff. It really just depends on the person depends if the person is more morph oriented or they're more locality or phenotypes and, and like line breeding. So uh, I don't know. It depends on the species. Uh, me personally, like I'm going for a line breeding on the Texas rats mm -hmm. uh, with the animals I produce, <clears throat> excuse me, last year uh, I produced a 1.1 that are just fantastic. So much orange. So the male, actually I can pull them out right now. Let me see. Could just reach right over. 
We're doing show and tell tonight. All right. So this, I'm hoping the light catches this well enough. So this is a male scaleless animal that I produced. And I hope you could see the orange coming through mm -hmm. the yeah. light. I don't think is bright enough, but he's super reddish orange. So I really want to pass this along into some offspring in the future down the line. And then just seeing. All right, relax. So there's his sister, which she has. Oh, got tagged. <laughs> a lot of orange, but also a lot of contrast. You see all this like. Yeah. Super cool patterning on the back. Also a lot of black and white color. So, and that very cool pattern in there. So when I put them together, I want to see what happens. But, yeah. It's now, great. if if they had if they, they had scales, do you think the color would, would, would differentiate? Like it wouldn't look as good as that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they, think it'd be they as naturally, orange? if you look at some animals that are het for scaleless, you will see the red undertones. My OG Texas rat, the one I've had since I'm like 10, she, you can see the red undertones in the scales. A lot of them have that. Um, not to say that's what they'll produce, but no, so you don't you don't get those colors on a scaled animal. Like nothing even close. Um same thing with the I don't want to say the same thing with the corns, but I would say you get a much more intense color. Yeah. It's like the background that's helping out what's being shown on the front. So I hear that. You know, and I think that's that's one thing that I another reason I like Kluberts so much too, because like um, and I'm speak on the hognose world too, but um morph with line breeds it, it's it's the next you know level yeah. of quality of animal you know um yep. and you know now that i have my own hatchlings and i'm keeping back and stuff like that i can already see like different ideas different paths that i want to take with some i mean just simple thing as albinos and um patterns and stuff like that um i think are, are really cool yeah so i was gonna say so what do you have working is it actually a morph or is it a line bred trait? Like what, it, what are you trying to line breed within the collection? Um, so it'll be, uh, albino, um, high red Just albino. How stuff. intense. Oh okay, yeah. Yeah. The red yeah. albino. Okay. The red albinos and, um, and then, um, some patterns as well within that same, uh, red line. Um, okay. I have a female that, let me see if I can, if you guys will be able to see her. Yeah, I'm pissed, guys. My lighting isn't great tonight. I'm gonna see if I can. My background just isn't as uh, black as usual. Yeah. So this girl just shed while I was gone, and if you see that, the pattern okay. and the reds, like yeah, that's nice. You know, keeping her was. Did know, I see that one when I was there? You did see her. She was smaller, a lot smaller. She shed like two twice since you've, okay. you've been here. And the pattern is getting a lot nicer. Um, but you know, stuff like that. Um nice. This year I had my extreme red uh albino superconda female lay a handful of eggs. So hopefully I get some, you know, really high red stuff. But things nice. like that, you know, and then going back into other morphs um you know okay <clears throat> put him into the xantix put him into the um, what's it called sable stuff um i haven't done sable albino yet um because either there are some nice you know yeah, you said a lot stuff. of people are doing them right yeah and there is some nice line bread stuff there um but for what i'm gonna pay for you know something like that i might as well start my own line you know of line breeding those okay. that combo and stuff nice and put their back real quick yeah no problem. let's see 
And then on the dark side, um, I have this male that's a Arctic sable that's pretty dark. Oh yeah. Uh, with, with light sides, you know? Okay. So I decided to keep him and, and see if we can produce like a, a darker, you know, like a striped dark line on, on the, on the stable stuff. Um, you know, okay. and he has that, that light belly, like, you know, almost like transparent throat and stuff. Nice. So, um, also speaking on the line breeding stuff, you know, I've talked about it before. I'll try to see if she'll let me take her out, but I picked up that like red Texas rat at, um, the Orlando Repticon that we vended at that day, um, bought it for $35. Oh, yeah, I remember that. An older gentleman, <laughs> um, which, and, and I don't want to, I'm not going to say his name, and no one really is going to know who he is. He told me he's having some health complications and he needs to move some animals, and I feel mm. horrible. And he's he's like asking me if I basically want to take a bunch of his Texas rats, but I just don't I don't have room for more adults at the moment. Yeah. Um he told me he might have some yearlings, especially from that that red uh line. Like I, I think siblings to this girl. And I said, just send me pictures of the yearlings and I'll see what I can do. Um maybe people will want to take some off of me. And I, cause I don't want to like re resell them per se. Like, and yeah. he said, he's going to let them go for cheap. I just feel super bad about it. I, I wish there was more I could do. Cause the guy's just like nice older gentleman who just really likes keeping his animals. And he's worried. He's going to kind of not lose be able the to keep him anymore. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. going to, he, he, he said he has too many snakes and he's worried. He's not going to be able to take care of them. So yeah. kind of sucks. So you're going to, you're going to show that. That one off real quick, or yeah, let me uh, yeah. let me grab her She's and let me the bottom of the rack. Yeah, Lucid uh, Arboreals. Uh, I'm bad with names, I forget names. So, you are all hogs secretly wanting to chew on you because I've seen some videos where they all chill. Then, like, just... man, um, you know, so so this is the thing about hog nose, right? We talk about you, you, if you go to hog nose groups or you hear other people talk about hog nose, um, you talk about one of the biggest things that comes up is um, how picky they can be to eat. Um, and as Joe mentioned, right, was getting a well-established hog nose because there is a handful of hog nose that I had to scent and, um, you know, either salmon scent, sardine, uh, toad, all that stuff. But once they start very well-established, they are always hungry. That thing's nice, it's man. It's hard to see in the light. The sunlight does it better, but I mean, there's a lot of red pigment coming through, kind of this light brownish and red. Like you just don't see this on a lot of individuals. A lot more and like pinkish between the scales. I'm gonna try to. Nope, lighting doesn't want to help me today. You're Sorry guys, bad man. bad experience. Yeah, I know. I need my <laughs> black background. It literally does. It does so much wonder to uh, showing off these animals. But yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and was was that a locality? Do you know? No, it's just straight line breeding. Line breeding. He has this dark male and a very red female and they just made redder babies hmm. so yeah <clears throat> let me let me put this male back real quick yeah yeah guys any throw it in the chat any species that you think we missed that yeah, should please. be on the list. So uh also want to mention my other honorable mentions. I'm throwing MBKs, Mexican Black Kings, and anything in the Getula King Snake complex, which is all your standard kind of I don't want to say all your standard, but it's a lot of your 
North American king snakes, excluding the montane ones. Um, but yeah, like the eastern black kings, the the chain king snakes. Um, it, that includes the, like the speckleds. Uh, I, I believe all that stuff. That's a little bit easier once you get into like the mountain king snakes. Maybe if I can comment on this if he's still here like the mountain kings are a little bit harder to take care of i believe you have to keep them a little bit cooler um and getting them started is a bit harder also that goes for like gray banded kings super cool animals by the way just like a little bit harder to care for so they don't quite make my list for most popular though i think they are growing in popularity it's just a matter of if people want to put that work in to get them going you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and my last one, I'm partial to this, are the cocci, uh, the ba Thai bamboo rat snakes. Um, I don't have experience with Latticinctus or Pulcher, and I'm leaving Volanti off, which I do keep, but I think they're a little bit trickier simply because they're from China. So uh, they're a little bit cooler kept animal than even the other three. But the cocci, from my personal experience, are just voracious animals. I can't say enough good things about them. I'm getting a breeding group of them, so I'm about to breed them this year. So yeah. that's going to be fun. Yeah. You know, one one animal I didn't have <clears throat> on my list was uh, bull snakes. Um, yeah. I, they're, they're really cool too, right? They have some really cool morphs. Um, the size of them are just, you know, nice long girthy animals um so yeah so I the think, thing I think about they're gonna be go ahead yeah no the bulls are cool for sure and they have really pretty morphs mm -hmm. the only reason i did not include them as well is because um i know some people have a hard time keeping them simply from environment uh i don't think you can let them get too hot mm -hmm. they're a little bit picky about that they also can be a little feisty, uh, especially as adults. Like they're not, I wouldn't say they're aggressive. They're very defensive. Um, yeah. Yeah. They will do a lot of mouth gaping and they'll hiss real loud and they'll rattle their tail real loud because they're trying to scare you the hell off. Yeah. Um, but I've seen it before with an adult. A lot of them will bluff strike. <coughs> so they'll basically go to strike at you, but with their mouth closed. Because they don't actually want to hit you. They're just trying to mm -hmm. scare you and make you jump away. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're not, like, gnarly nasty. They just don't want to be messed with sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, that that defensive behaviors that they have are, are really general with, like, uh, colubrids and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, and and, I, and I, I enjoy seeing those behaviors. It's just really interesting to see that, um, you know, like you know hog nose there's a little they, more excitement yeah the hog nose same thing they bluff strike they hiss they even hood up you yep. know um what's it called that you know they play dead and stuff like yeah. that and um so it, it's a very interesting how those animals um you know have those defensive behaviors and generally like what i tell people you know when where it shows and they ask do they bite you know it's like any animal can bite first of all but yep 99.9 is .9 the bites are always mo food motivated or food related, right? Like handling, yep. feeding one animal and then going to handle one animal without fully washing the scent off and stuff. Yeah. Um, or, or having mice sitting or rats sitting in the room while you're handling your I'm, animals and stuff like that. I'm yeah. very careful about that because, dude, when I have rats in my room, as soon as I walk in with my live rats for the week, mm -hmm. my pythons are going nuts. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them is at the front and fucking ready. Mm -hmm. Especially my, like my best feeders. They know as soon as I walk into the room and it's crazy how that happens. Some yeah. of them I'll open the tub and they come flying out. So yes, yeah, scent is a huge thing. And on those nights, so I typically I'll either feed the rat snakes before them or I'll feed them on a different day. 
And I just won't mess with the rat snakes that night because I'm like, I know this smells in here and I'm not trying to trigger any feed responses right now. So I'm just like, I'm good. You're not yeah. getting touched. I'll yeah. check on you, but that's about it. I hear that. Um, you know, and then we then then you add breeding season for females on top of that, right? They're building eggs and stuff for that. Um, they're nonstop eaters, at least for my hog nose. The other yeah. day I was repairing one of the hog nose. And I was as I was putting the mail in, she bit the mail. Really? Yeah. Um, it was just one of those like movement things, and she went for okay. it. Um, you know, and once I pulled her off, I took her off um and put the mail in, she was okay. She was then she started twitching and then you know, following the mail and stuff like that. Gotcha. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> Lucid or Boreals, Marcus is asking uh rhinos. Yeah. So I you keep have, um yeah. I have two. I have a sub-adult female, and I have a hatchling male. Uh, it's unfortunate to admit that I'm not having great luck feeding this hatchling male. He ate the first week I had him. Then he went into a shed cycle, and he has not eaten since, and it's been a bit. I tried fish last night, and he didn't want to go for minnows either, so... Getting, I, I don't want to say I'm getting nervous because he's very active and he just moves around his little tub all the time and he's always just like kind of cruising. So I'm like, all right, you're not lethargic or anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what's up. He's being kept cool in my room. I wonder if it's a little too cool. Too cool. I, yeah. I don't know, but like my the sub adult female was doing great. She was eating, she is eating every meal. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if it's the prey item. Um, so, yeah, I just the the female's doing real well. Uh, the baby's giving me a run for my money, but you know, I spent uh, I spent a pretty penny on that animal, so I'm gonna do my do my thing to try to yeah, make man. sure it gets back eating again. Yeah, you know? and and you try you said minnows. Yeah, I, I went and got minnows. I finally buckled down. I'm like, all right, I can't can't take this shit anymore. So I went and got minnows. I tried that, and nope. And I was like, damn it. And the minnows died in like a few minutes anyway. I was just like, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'm going to try a bunch of different things. I tried the Dawn dish soap trick on a pinky. I've tried more pinkies. I just like strike it out every time but yeah i'm sure eventually i'll i'll get it i need to get red hot pinks i think and try live? that i don't know yeah i don't know have you tried live pinks i have not but i'm i <clears throat> the next time uh our buddy ryan o'neill has some pinks i'm taking mm -hmm. them i hear that and, and you know i think that's another struggle uh with certain um colubrids it's when they have that very diverse style diet in the wild even though we've kept them in captivity for so long um they still have that instinct right um i currently have one one hog nose still on scent really uh, yeah and he's eating uh salmon scent um Damn. and he he had like you know from from the beginning scent Took maybe like two or three unscented and then came off food, waited for like, I waited about two weeks. Let's see if he, he'll eat, um, wouldn't eat, right back on scent. Um, I just can't get him on scent. You know, it's one of those weird things. But I think eventually, he, I think he should be okay. You know, they'll, yeah. they'll snap out once they, right. that hunger and that growth starts. Yeah. Um, if not, then I guess he'll be a permanent resident here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's what that's what i feel especially with these animals that like start well it's like you're gonna get hungry eventually like mm -hmm. you're gonna take something it's just a matter of when you decide to take it like this mm -hmm. rhino was eating and like i was checking with the breeder every time like he was updating me oh it took a pink took a pink because like i paid for it in advance so i was like I want one whatever i got it so it was eating and like i said it took a pinky the first week I had it. So it knows how to eat. It's not like it's a fresh hatchling that like just refusing food. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just a matter of, excuse me, figuring it the hell out. Yeah. How, how old is it now? You said, I 
I forget when it hatched. Um, I'm going to say like late summer. Okay. Of 23. Gotcha. So I said like about nine, 10 months so far. Close. Uh, Eight, nine months. I'd say even less. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. And did That's it what I for, said. Did it eat for sorry. you there? Has it eaten for In you? my house? Yeah. It once, that one once. time. The first, literally, the first week I got it, then it went into a shed cycle and refused food. Like they're super, yeah, they won't, they won't take food in the shed cycle. I noticed, um, and then after that, it's been just an L. And I'm just like, come on. Yeah, you know it's crazy, man. Like the stress of that, right? And 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 being a, you know, you've had different type of snakes and stuff over the years. And I'm pretty sure you've dealt with it before, but the stress of one animal not eating. Oh, is it such a pisses pain. me off. Yeah. It, you know, and so like I, I dealt with I dealt with it too. One of the uh scaleless leucistics I had. So it came from a solo surviving egg of a double clutch. Um she hatched out small and didn't took one meal, took mm-hmm. its first meal. And then didn't eat for two months. And I was just like, at, at least two months. And I was just trying, trying, trying. Thought I was going to die. And then one week, just took. Out of nowhere. It's like, okay, I'll eat today. It's like, yeah. what? There's no it's like, why now? There. Why now yeah. do you choose to eat? You had two yeah. months to just like chill. I thought this thing was dying on me. And it's just gone. I'm like, yeah. all right. I hear that. And you know what? And and I, I I see it now like when like you know that one pet owner, hog no snake owner, you know, posted on the group, my snake didn't eat today, you know, the first time. And I see the worry, right? Like us people that you know, we, we have a decent amount of snakes and have more experience stuff like that. You're like, like, okay, it didn't eat one time. Yeah, that's how I feel. It's like something doesn't eat that week. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I guess yeah. you get a break. Someone else yeah. gets an extra. Yeah. And, and then thinking about it for like that first time snake owner, it's a big thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, you know, talking about that, I, I think now, because I, I same, same idea, right? Like, oh, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll eat next week or I'll eat in, you know, next try two feedings or whatever. Um. Maybe a different approach. Maybe I don't know, because like if, if you play into that too, then how many you know how many uh, people you have? Like okay, what do I do with my snake? How do I feed it? And yeah, stuff. Um, I'll I'll be honest. Something I I don't want to say I like to do, but like I'm all about the the starving method. It's like mm-hmm. okay, you don't eat that one week, and then you don't take a second week. Okay, now I'm not feeding. I'm specifically not going to try feeding you for a third week, mm-hmm. maybe two, maybe two weeks. So maybe that fourth week and then we'll try. And mm-hmm. it's like, you, hopefully you're hungry this time. That's what I tried doing with this rhino as well. And nothing, but I have, I, I have to try a pinky again. I think I need to get smaller ones. Hmm. Yeah. And then so. man, and then you can go, you know, the, the other route, like sent him with like, canned salmon water juice and uh, i'll try scenting with quail as well uh, that's what i asked have you tried yeah scenting with quail well no but this this female likes quail so Mm. yeah he's he'll probably take quick then if 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 you can scent with the quail yeah Mm. so i think i'm gonna try that did you get there's a bunch of things to try the what's it called uh incubator eggs from uh blake no, I did not. Okay. I just don't with my animals, I don't think those are gonna do a lot for me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, if, as a treat, like I could put them all somewhere as like a little mm-hmm. nest and let one of the rat snakes like do a little a little nest raid, yeah. but I don't know. I don't it's whatever. I'd rather just feed them a hole. No, for sure. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I got a handful and I fed was it once I fed the egg, um, and but I fed the, the quails uh, pretty, pretty okay. often. Um, I just think that the the whole egg's a little more harsh, 
far are you know especially hog nose they're not as big yeah um you know so i don't want to pump them full of hard shells and stuff like that which that's one one crazy thing i always think about when these animals you know eat a whole uh mice an adult mouse or you know even like a small uh rat and stuff like that like how they can process all that bone hair and stuff like that and be fine you know they're built um, for it yeah you know so may maybe like the concern of the egg is not that big of a concern uh i don't know yeah now uh you you said so what you're feeding the i assume the day old quail size mm -hmm. to some of your stuff mm -hmm. are your males take are your adult males able to take that or yeah. really just your females okay my adult males yeah okay yeah gotcha. yeah so like i think the size that um you know and like a plug to to you know to 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 blake and stuff like that you know like you said luckily we're close where we can stop by and pick them up from directly from him um he has the day olds that are basically hopper size um so my females take eat them my my adult males can eat them um and like my sub adult females my like year old females um but then that next size up, I think, is too the small. Big. Is too big. Yeah, I I can tell you that the smalls are too big for yeah. any of your animals. Yeah, yeah, because I I feed the smalls to my adults, mm -hmm. my adult like Texas rats. So, yeah. and I think a medium would be too big. Oh, for sure. For them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I, and I, I I think he's working on doing button quails as well he's working on it yeah um when he gets those i'm gonna be excited to try them i could tell you that mm -hmm. but i'm definitely not i'm gonna try to not give anything button quail that i'm selling just mm -hmm. because i know people don't have access to that so yeah. Yeah. stuff on quail is solely for me yeah yes yeah, same same method I, i'm doing here anything that's you know, in my for sale rack, it's, it's just getting mice. That's yeah. it, you know. Um, you know, and then what I do is, you know, I've done the reptilinks. Um, I do the reptilinks too. And those I can give to my hatchlings. And they have the okay. the quail ones. They have the frog stuff. Nice. So they have like the the five gram links. Um, cool. So I can give those to, to my hatchlings I have. And they like them. Um <clears throat> so you know so maybe for like smaller species that's another option as well there for for a okay. very diet um yeah what's it called um damn i was gonna bring up what what's you know we we talked about like top and stuff like that but what's been going on the last couple of weeks since we've had our last show together with your collection your breeding season and stuff like that but nothing much man dude i've been waiting for this freaking female to lay and i don't know where she's at i i've been so confused because i thought she had a prelay shed but she hasn't laid so i guess she didn't but i clearly see eggs in her mm. like i pick her up and there there's eggs there's yeah. little indents i see eggs so maybe i've just seen the eggs super well and there's a lot of them and she's just not as far as far along as i thought i don't really know um, though at this point, I, I don't know what's taking this long because yeah. I haven't paired her in a bit. So about how, years. how long after prelay sheds, do you see, egg, do you get eggs? Do you a week. have you a week? Usually a week. Okay. No. Yeah. What, so what I about, still have my, yeah. my six eggs cooking from my original clutch and that's it at the moment. What about like, um, ovulation sheds? Have you have gotten them in the past or what like the shed right after brumation um no, I, would, I would say like right before they start building um yeah so it it would be like typically i guess what it could I be right see, after brumation yeah so typically yeah so typically what i tend to see is like you brumate the animals and then you bring them out and then there, they'll go into a shed. Oh, yeah. They'll go into a shed cycle shortly after. Hmm. Within within a few weeks of pulling them out, but you're also usually pairing within those first few weeks. So, Correct. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I think it could just be that fast. That's what I've seen with my stuff. And maybe you've seen different. Um, I don't, I don't really track that as like an ovulation set shed. I usually mm -hmm. say it as like a post brumation type of deal, but sometimes yeah. they don't go through one. So it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't get post, um, brumation sheds. Um, interesting. Yeah. I've gotten this year and last year, I got, I think one snake, different, different females, but one female that goes through ovulation shed. But then most of them have been pre-lay shed. And then, like, I've gotten it down, like, you know, especially with my husband pro stuff, down to, like, 10 days and they're laying okay. eggs. Um, gotcha. So, like, most of the times it's, it's pre-lay sheds and, and ready to lay eggs. Nice. Like that. Cool. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is why this this is so such a great topic. And, you know, talking about the lubrids is the varied, you know, the variance in the species and stuff like that. Like, yeah, um, you see sheds after brumation and stuff like that. Um, and I have heard people say that, like, oh, they're just shedding right after brumation, you know, getting back into the growth of things. Yeah. But also, too, my, my snakes don't lose um gain or lose much weight in brumation either. So that might be Yeah, weird. mine didn't either this year. Like I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't notice any real difference at all, though mine was a bit abbreviated. Uh, I think a, a bit sh a tad shorter than yours, but I didn't I didn't really notice much. Mm -hmm. They went right back to feeding, so yeah. I hear that? But yeah. Um, let's see. What does it say? With me, um, I mean, I got a handful. I mean, I got a full, almost a full incubator of eggs, so it's going decent. I've had. Um, nothing's perfect. You no, know, I've got had a couple of, of slug outs. Um, okay. My toxic stuff, which is a Xantic, um toffee belly, um, which it's almost a, you know, a must. Um, oh, yeah. So you can almost tell, see the light. Tell me, tell me I'm crazy. Like, do you not see? I don't know. It's hard to see in the light, but I see egg lumps all through her but she has not laid anything. And I feel them as I like palpate, but still waiting. Tomorrow you'll get eggs. That's what I've been saying for the last three weeks. <laughs> Have you seen her in the nest, in the lay bins? On and off. On and off. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. So. Do, do you but my first female didn't even use her lay bin, so now I'm not even... I take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Do your um, do your females shut off food when they're close to laying? Your no, no, they take. They take. Yeah, they're solid. Texas rats are just voracious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing for hog nose. My most, you know, most of my females will eat as they're as they're laying. I, I you know, we yeah. talked about it. Yeah, you know, they'll take a meal as they're laying. So, um. I had one or twos that, um, one or two, yeah, that decided like, okay, no, I'm not eating. But those females laid like 17, 18 eggs, you know, so like, not nothing else could fit in them. Yeah, right yeah. before laying, you know. Um, but right after, they're looking for food. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, something I do want to mention before you know, uh, tonight is that on my channel, um on my thousand mark subscribe i'm going to do a giveaway um with some of my partnerships and sponsors and stuff like that nice. so i just hit 900 um this past week so i'm going to do a video dropping this video probably uh tomorrow or sunday with all the all the like information about a giveaway uh, personally i'm going to give away a 2023 uh hatchling um, nice. haven't I'll, I'll i'll you know mention it on the on the video what i'm gonna give away um i have um you know uh ship your reptiles giving away um two what's it called uh coupons basically 70 percent off their shipping and stuff like that nice. 70 75 percent um i have a couple swag from an, another a couple of the other partnerships that are going to be given away to during our i'm gonna just do it oh. live and stuff like that 
So if you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and um, go subscribe to my channel. Go check that out. Um, if you guys want to get into some hog nose and, you know, want to pick up a free hog nose, you know, uh, check that out. And so, right after you search for Alvaro's channel, you go ahead and type just colubrid corruption in the search right. bar and my channel is going to pop up and then you're going to go hit subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I hear that because I'm sure, coming man. up on 900 as well, yeah. so I'm right. I'm I'm getting there. Um, my podcast been awesome this past week. I think was the, uh, it's definitely well one. It's like the number two watched episode already in just nice. the first five days. So one, that's insane. Um, and it's got like some of the most views, but it, just in terms of watch time, it's already number two nice. of all time. So that's cool. Also, I started uploading my podcast to the podcast platform. So you could actually go listen to it on your way to work instead of watching the video. Cause I know people were complaining a little bit, so you could do that. Yeah. But, and, yeah. and it's on, on what, um, what streaming services for, for podcasts? Uh, definitely Apple music, Spotify, uh, sorry, Apple podcast, Spotify, uh, you could get on some others. I think the the program I used, it was able to upload it to other places. I think it's on, I want to say it's on Amazon M Music, mm -hmm. I think. Um, okay. And a few others. But yeah, I put it on the main ones. App Apple and Spotify were the ones I cared about the most. I think most those people the, yeah, I think those on Earth use, use those platforms. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny because like I've uploaded, I think, two episodes and then I stopped for some reason on, on like the streaming services uh, for like the podcast, just the audio. Yeah. Um, I need to get back on it. But dude, I just grinded one night and I was just yeah, like I was downloading all the files and then just slapping them all together on, on the site. And I was just like, all right, let's do this. And I knocked it out in like an hour and got most of them done. So I was just like. Now we're set. Now we're even. And now right after the episode finishes on Sunday nights, I just I'm going to do it right away just so it's available ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and I get it, man, because like when I used to have to drive for work and stuff like that and like the, sitting in traffic, that's what I would do. Just podcast, nonstop podcast and just the audio yeah. version. It was was the, the best thing. Um, and I've had same thing, you know, whoever's if you guys, you know, have asked me for the the audio forms. Um, eventually I'll get them all on there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, um, what's it called? Anything else you want to bring up before, you know, um, maybe we close the night or, um, no, just make sure you're going and following me and Alvaro on all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, meteoric serpents on Instagram, clovers, Rep clovers, reptiles on instagram uh and you know same names on youtube and stuff so right. if you want to go support us um alvaro is doing great stuff with his channel i also have my own personal patreon if you're a member of mj's but you want some like colubrid focused content i have the meteoric serpents patreon i think it's going to be great it's really just for community building supporting me and continuing my podcast because i just want to do my best to make that bigger and better as we evolve so and plus build an awesome colubrid community so if you're interested go check out all my stuff on social media you'll be able to find the link uh it's in my link tree and stuff but um yeah guys thanks for hanging out with us crowd seemed a little short tonight but it's all good i appreciate everyone who is in here so sure. uh, it's awesome to have the conversation i know a lot of people watch the replay and stuff so if you're here live and made it this far thank you and if you're watching the replay and made it this far thank you very much any uh last words alvaro no man just uh thank you for watching guys um if you guys want to hear anything specific about colubrids drop a comment down below you know and uh we'll tailor some some episodes to what the corral wants too you know um it's, it's always good to you know get the the viewers uh input i think Especially yeah. for this 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 series of colubrids, um, yep. you know, and I think next week we'll go back to the normal schedule and stuff. Yeah. Also, uh, don't hesitate to message us on Instagram if you have like 
personal questions like i tell people on my show like because i have a lot of ball python viewers like if you're interested in a colubrid species and you don't know how to obtain one or who to get one from mm -hmm. let me help you just hit mm -hmm. me up and i'll give you all the information i can and put you in touch with all the breeders i can so uh that's how i'd like to give back because i'm also not a professional uh, well, I, I like to consider myself a professional, but like, I'm not an expert. That's what I should have said. I'm not an expert, but I will do my best to yeah. help you out. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to piggyback on that, it's like, you know, I'm pretty sure the same thing, right? Like if I don't have it, even if it's for hog nose, I'm going to point you the right way where to go get it. Uh, you know, if it's a specific more for a combo, um, I got a handful of, of people that just, you know, point you the right way to you know, get that project started and stuff like that. You know, if you yeah. need rat snakes, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy too. I know a few guys. You hear that? But uh, yeah. All right, man. So once again, thank you so much, guys, for checking us out. Uh, as always, this has been another episode of Thank God It's Colubrids on the Trap Talk Reptile Network. Thanks for hanging out with me and Alvaro. I am Joe D from Meteoric Serpents. Alvaro is from Clover's Reptiles. This was episode number six. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great weekend and a great rest of your night, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.